Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of On The Flats. I'm your host, Doug Kane. Now the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are coming off a very disappointing loss to Virginia last week. They're going to try to rebound against a very, very good Florida State team. Florida State's record is 6-1 with their only blemish coming against Wake Forest earlier this season. Now Florida State head coach Bobby Bowden may be making his last trip to Bobby Dodd Stadium as he contemplates retirement after the season. Here's Avery Roberson with more on legendary head coach Bobby Bowden. Thanks, Doug. Hey, Jackets, I'm Avery Robinson. And with the Seminoles coming to town, I was able to catch up with the legendary coach Bobby Bowden. He spoke a little bit about his career, thoughts of retirement, and of course, the Yellow Jackets. 2006, we go 7-6. 2007, we go 7-6. And, six. and uh, this year, we've got to do better, you know, and I think we will do better. I think we've got a better football team. They put Florida State in the ACC to get everybody to come up to our level. And that's what they've done. Now, people think we've done bad. Boy, y'all really, y'all have really fallen down. We ain't fallen as far as you think. It's they have come up. Everybody is recruiting better players. And uh, then I think us getting into the conference made a lot of other kids want to play in the conference. So they stayed in Georgia, or they stayed in South Carolina, or they stayed in North Carolina instead of going off and going out of school somewhere else, you know? And so that's what, why the league's got better. There's no doubt the league's better. Our days of domination are not right now. We're, right now, we're, rest, we're with the rest of the pack trying to get back to the top. Now, we plan on getting back. We, we plan on getting back. You know what? And I think we will. But like I say, you ain't going to get up there and lock it in. I guarantee you that. The conference is too good right now for one team to dominate. And so when will I get out? Gosh, I don't know. I hadn't decided yet. You know, I've always signed a five-year contract. Well, gosh, I'm 78. I, I, I'm not going to coach till I'm 83. You know, I'm, I'm, so no, no sense trying to fool someone. I'd still like to win a certain amount of games. I'd still like to win another national championship. You know, we've got a successor named, so we know how we stand. And uh, uh, but when that will be, I don't know. But uh, it's, it won't, won't be as long as it was. <laughs> Those were some great words from an icon in college football. Now let's take it back to Doug, so we can watch the Jackets take on Bobby Bowden Seminoles. Coach Bowden and his nose come to Atlanta riding a four-game winning streak, looking to knock off a reeling Tech team. Coach Paul Johnson told his Jackets that good teams don't lose two in a row. Tech looks to show how good they really are. Tech's defense isn't so good right here as they allow Florida State to put together a 10-play, 68-yard drive that gets them to Tech's nine-yard line. With starting cornerback Jaheed Ward Daniels injured, reserve Mike Peterson gets the start and the interception in the end zone, but the play is nullified thanks to a pass interference call. The Noles take advantage of the second chance as quarterback Christian Ponder scores on a sneak. Josh Nesbitt responds with a 30-yard pass to Jonathan Dwyer. This then led to a Tech field goal. On the ensuing kickoff, Florida State return man Michael Garvin takes this one 63 yards and sets up the Noles for this field goal that makes the score 3-10 Noles at the end of the first. Big runs by Abex, Roddy Jones, and Marcus Wright set up this touchdown run from Lucas Cox in the beginning of the second that ties the game to 10. On Tech's next drive, Jonathan Dwyer finds a huge hole and rushes 36 yards to pay dirt. This score puts Tech on top for the first time in the game. Tech's first big play on defense came when freshman safety Cooper Taylor picks off this tip pass and sets up another touchdown run, this time by A-back Greg Smith, making the score 24-10 Georgia Tech. Bobby Bowden's nose aren't ones to give up, as number 38 running back Jermaine Thomas goes 62 yards and is finally tripped up by Mike Peterson. Ponder completes this pass to Cedric Holloway for the final score before the half. It's halftime here, Georgia Tech versus Florida State, and the Jackets are leading 24 to 20. Legendary head coach Bobby Bowden has a lot to think about after Paul Johnson's offense clicked on all cylinders during the first half. Speaking of legends, Georgia Tech has several of their own, one of whom is Mr. Clint Castleberry. Here's Kelly Stiegel with more. Hey there, Yellow Jackets. This is Kelly Stiegel from the Flats. Now, Georgia Tech's had some amazing players of the years, including Randy Rhino, Joe Hamilton, and Calvin Johnson. But only one Georgia Tech player has ever had the honor of having his jersey retired, and that is Clint Castleberry. Clint Castleberry didn't look like much of a football player when he came to coach William Alexander's attention in the early days of World War II. He was 5 feet 9 inches tall and weighed only 155 pounds. What really caught the coach's eye was Castleberry's speed. He was said to run like a crazed jackrabbit by the Atlanta Journal Sports Editor. Castleberry came to Tech in 1942 from Boys High in College Park, Georgia, and he had never played in a losing game while in high school. World War II drafts were causing serious player shortages in college football, so the Southern Conference, to which Tech belonged, was allowing freshmen to play in their first year. 
In his first season at Tech, Castleberry was voted the All-Rookie Honors by the Associated Press for his performance against Notre Dame, an honor he would receive two more times that season. He was also third in voting for the Heisman Trophy, but the call to duty caused Clint to leave Tech after his first season to enter the U.S. Army Air Corps. In 1943, Lieutenant Castleberry was shipped out to the Mediterranean Theater where he was a co-pilot on a B-26 Marauder bomber. He was interviewed there in October, during which he expressed his desire to return to Tech and play football again after the war. On November 7, 1944, at 7.20 a.m., Clint's B-26 took off from Robert Field in Nigeria, bound for Durer, Senegal, ferrying supplies. His flight was never heard from again. Georgia Tech's students, fans, and alumni headed a campaign to raise a memorial fund for the fallen aviator and Tech player. They raised over $4 million to purchase a war bond in his honor. In his eulogy for Clint, Coach Bobby Dodd stated that had Clint not left Tech to join the war, he would have been the greatest player in Tech history. He also said of Clint, he was a great boy, gentle and brave, manly yet sweet. Clint Cassaberry remains the only Georgia Tech football player to ever have his jersey retired. Now back to the Georgia Tech FSU game, and here's Doug with your second half highlights. Thanks, Kelly. As great a player as Clint Castleberry was, Tech has another running back that may be joining him in the history books as Jonathan Dwyer starts the second half with his 66-yard gallop for a touchdown. Florida State was really putting some hits on quarterback Josh Nesbitt. J. Bo Shaw comes in to spell Nesbitt and is drilled by a Florida State defensive end and fumbles the pitch. The Seminoles recover. The Yellow Jacket D was not to be outdone. On the ensuing drive, number 93 Michael Johnson tees off on Christian Ponder and forces a fumble as Tech recovers on the 49-yard line. This game quickly became a defensive nail-biter as both teams punted on their next couple of drives. Late in the fourth, Anoa made the game too close for comfort when backup quarterback Devontae Richardson completes this bomb to number 5 Preston Parker to pull Florida State within three. Tech couldn't put the game out of reach when Shaw throws this interception. This return to the Florida State 41. Florida State's offense drives the entire length of the field with under a minute left. It was bend or break for Tech's defense and they didn't break. Freshman safety Cooper Taylor made another big play by forcing a fumble that was recovered by cornerback Rashad Reed. Let the celebration begin as Tech comes away with a huge win, edging out Coach Bowden and the Knowles 31 to 28. It was the last play of the game. I mean, it was either we had to stop him right there, and I mean, I don't know. You can't even really explain it. It's just shock right now that I mean, it's never give up that mentality of our defense. I mean, we've, we've been bending but not breaking the whole year, and that play kind of defined it. And I was able to put my helmet right on the ball, and it came right out. Stuff they teach you, Coach Womack, all the defensive coaches were teaching us. I'm glad that I did fall on it because, you know, they was right there. So if they would have fell on it, they would just go and then, you know, fell on it. I was excited I fell on it. I don't know what I'd be thinking right now if they would have go and recovered the touchdown. I was just thinking, like, oh, I hope they don't recover this fumble because it, it, they blame me on me for the rest of the year. <laughs> I think it was a, a great game. Both teams fought hard and and played to the end. And uh, I'm proud of our guys for finding a way to make a play. About two freshmen at the end. I mean, that was a great hit by Cooper. And uh, I was joking with Rashad. I'm like, he needs to learn to fall on the ball. Uh, I saw him try to pick that up. I wanted to strangle him. And then when he, then when I saw him roll over with it, I wanted to kiss him. I, you know, I'm just honored to be on the opposite sideline of Coach Biden. I mean, he's meant so much to college football and, and done so many things, and he's a tremendous, tremendous person. It, you know, besides being a great football coach, I think he's he's a good person, and uh, it was humbling to be on the other sideline. You know, it was a big win for us. I think that everybody, when the season started, wrote us off. He said we were going to win three games, four games. Then when we started out pretty good, then everybody jumped on the bandwagon. And then when we lost last week, they couldn't get off fast enough. And and so it was good for for the guys to, to win. You know, I don't know if we'll win another game, but I know this. I know we've won seven. And uh, that's more than anybody thought we'd win, so I'm proud of them. It was the biggest I've ever been, biggest hole I've ever ran through. So, you know, obviously the line did a great job. You know, Nick Clare made a key block on that 60-yard one, yard one. So, you know, I mean, offensive line did great today. You know, they came out from the beginning, you know, and just was punishing them from the get-go. You know, all they did make made everything easier for Josh, you know, and for me, 
and it made the offense look a whole lot better, you know, and showed how good this offense can really be. It was a great moment, you know, something I've I always cherish for the rest of my life. You know, it was a great experience. You know, the crowd, you know, ro roaring on the field after the game. You know, that that's you know that's a, the love and greatness of college football. Hey everybody, I'm here in the aftermath of what was Georgia Tech versus Florida State. We ended up being one of the most exciting games of the year. And this end zone is where Cooper Taylor made the big hit and Georgia Tech recovered the fumble to be able to kneel out the clock and come out on top 31 to 28. Students and fans all rushed the field in celebration as Georgia Tech improves its record to seven wins and two losses, making them bowl eligible once more. All the flats will be back when the Miami Hurricanes come to town. Till then, I'm your host, Doug Kane, and we'll see you next time right here on The Flats.